in this video I want to show you guys how you guys can find a job with LinkedIn uh, either it being in the space of quantitative finance quantitative analyst quantitative researcher high frequency trading I'm going to show you kind of tips of what you guys can search and look for so this is actually my LinkedIn and first of all if you guys want uh, add me on LinkedIn is Abian Velasquez and if you guys could also also like this video and subscribe uh, so what I'm gonna do is you know I know a lot of the people watching these videos are really into quantitative finance uh, they're like how can I get into the industry how can I can get into these top uh, finance companies hedge funds how maybe you don't even know how to approach uh, how to search uh, for these jobs so one of the first things I usually do I, and though I have premium with LinkedIn, um, you can go to the job section on LinkedIn. And uh, one of the things uh, that you can do is uh, quantitative researcher. So this is pretty much one of the most popular uh, jobs right now. Uh, quantitative researcher, uh, though usually if you have less years of experience you would have a quantitative analyst usually quantitative analysts have about zero to five years of experience where a quantitative researcher usually has you know more than five six seven eight years of experience uh so actually um yeah we can stay with researcher quantitative researcher for now and uh once you do that it will look you know through the whole united states on the jobs and you know I recommend that for now obviously if you're you prefer a city right now the best cities for quantitative researcher um, or quantitative finance high frequency trading and I'll go developer would be you know San Francisco has um, has a couple companies obviously New York uh, Chicago uh, Philadelphia has a presence uh, obviously if you're not in the United States London has a lot of presence, a lot of big companies, and also Atlanta and Charlotte. Uh, our two also cities are growing in the finance industry. But right now, I'm just going to put United States, and so we can see all the jobs within the quantitative researcher space. So right here, we have uh, SIG, a very popular uh, hedge fund uh, that they concentrate, if I'm not mistaken, high frequency trading uh, as a quantitative researcher. As you guys can see I do work at Vanguard uh, but here you guys can look at what they're looking for and usually within the quantitative research searcher space most of these people do have PhDs uh, some of them do have masters but I think most would have PhDs where uh, as an analyst maybe a lot of them just have masters but a lot of them still have PhDs though so you know like I said you know, like a lot of people do know if you're trying to get into this quantitative researcher uh, space uh, you will most likely need a master's or PhD where if you're trying to get into high frequency trading you just need a bachelor's you just have to be really really good with computers because as a researcher you're going to be doing a lot of math and high level math so you can see here it's like examining global markets utilize terabytes of trading data leverage your mathematical uh, statistical skills to build models and a lot of these quantitative researcher a lot of the jobs are also kind of in the data science space. Um, there's this divide right now in finance where it's like, you know, what's the main title? Obviously, a lot of the titles are quantitative researcher, but data science is also a lot of the companies are running just data science here. PhD pretty much in a STEM degree. And I like LinkedIn because it gives you pretty much how many people applied. So for this job, 22, there was 22 applicants. This company has about 1,000 to 5,000 employees. Um, since I work at Vanguard, it gives me how many people are working there, where it is, and, you know, based on my skills and my LinkedIn profile, what skills match with this job. And here it says 22 applicants, two applicants in the past day. Uh, some of the skills, uh, as you can see, 45 of the people that applied have master's degree, 41% have a PhD, and 14 have an MBA. Uh, eight people have, are senior applicants, five are entry level applicants, and two VP levels. And you can pretty much see where they're pretty much applying from. Oh, and actually Boston has a good presence. I didn't uh, say Boston. Boston has a really good finance presence. 
tells you kind of the company and sometimes they even give you salary expectations. Uh, so that's just one of them. So you can go to Quantitative Researcher here on LinkedIn and look at all these companies. So Bridgefront Capital, um, you know, posted this job two days ago, 610 applicants. That's actually pretty crazy. Uh, the requirements, uh, job or C++ proficiency, uh, minimum bachelor's, minimum two years of experience. Obviously, as a quant, you're gonna be doing a lot of Python, R, Linux, uh, you know, obviously machine learning, some data science. And obviously, I'm gonna change this to data science, but you're gonna see a lot of, there's a lot of correlation between quantitative researcher and uh, data science. Here, six, ten applicants since applicants of the past day. Uh, Nineteen have bachelors, fifteen have masters, and twenty-four have PhDs. Uh, a lot of these jobs, most people, you're gonna need a master's or a PhD just because you are, in a sense, doing research, and they love people who have done research before. I uh, hear obviously a hedge fund, Two Sigma, uh, DRW, uh, quantitative researcher. As you can see, three years of experience, statistical modeling. Uh, series analysis, regression analysis, return forecasting, trading algorithms, uh, bachelor's, computer science, any STEM, usually graduate degree, almost always something that's desired in the quantitative research space, uh, strong programming skills. Uh, so all these is going to be strong statistics and strong programming. You're going to see that over and over. 116 people applied to this job. 14 had bachelor's, 60 had master's, and 23 had PhDs. So you can see with LinkedIn is awesome because you can actually see who you're competing against. If you just have a bachelor's, so you're literally competing with over 70% of the people are going to have master's and PhDs degree. And you can see your competition and you know where that competition is probably coming from. And obviously the growth of Two Sigma have been growing about 19% in the past two years and 24% overall. So that's great, uh, DRW, or jump trading. Uh, another thing that you can do, um, here I'm gonna do a couple more. Uh, I'm gonna change this to other titles that you can search for because uh, not, it's not only quantitative researcher. If you do data science, there's a lot of jobs. Uh, a lot of is very correlated. Uh, stats art or statistical arbitrage or strats a strategist. Uh, Goldman Sachs how, uh, uses that uh, pretty much or that name. So here you can see three five years experience, Python C plus uh, plus, machine learning, statistical learning, complex optimization, linear algebra, high level math, um, a lot of problem solving skills. 100 people applied and everybody that, oh, uh, well there's only been, oh, 100 applicants and literally every single applicant for this job has had a PhD. That's insane. And then you guys can see the number of employees. Jump trading has been growing about 18% the past two years. It's pretty good. And you guys can just go and look at all the jobs that are looking for quantitative researchers. Uh, and here, you guys see quantitative analyst. Obviously, as a researcher, you might need more years of experience, where as an analyst, usually you don't need as many years here. Obviously, one to five years of experience. Like I said, a quantitative analyst, you will need less years of experience, and you will most likely start as a quantitative analyst and move into a quantitative researcher. And actually, here, this is perfect. Um, here, they actually give you an estimate of the salary. So probably the base salary could be 142 on average, where the range could be anywhere from 100 to 200, and the total compensation with bonuses and everything will be on average 160 for this position, where this could be uh, in within this 111 to 31 range. And this is more like a quantitative analyst. You start off at 142. Once you get to quantitative researcher, you'll definitely be over 200. And you can see, you know, all the people that have applied: 66 have masters, 18 have PhDs you can see your competition and who you're competing with. Uh, obviously, quantitative researcher and quantitative analyst are, are, are two very, very popular ones, but I feel like they're gonna change. The third one is strats. Here's str strats or strategist. And this is uh, being used a, a, a lot more often. Uh, and as you can see right here in Goldman, it says QIS strats. So this is, uh, another kind of like a mix between data science, portfolio management, uh, quantitative finance. So as you can see, the quantitative investment strategies group in area uh, within uh, GSAM focuses on quantitative portfolio management strategies in global markets. Uh, so 
when you look at the qualifications, obviously the same thing as quantitative finance, you know, or quantitative research, or CEC++, machine learning, NLP, K-means clustering, neural networks, data science, it's all the same thing. The thing is, all these titles are just different, but it's almost the same thing. See here, stats ARB. Uh, let me do strats. You can do either strats or strats arbs, but if you do strats here, you can see a lot of Goldman uh, Sachs. They use that pretty much, and a lot of banks uh, do too. Obviously, Bank of America, Credit E Trading, Quant Strat, or Strategist. And you can see around uh, different companies are using her strats arbs as. Uh, I guess here in LinkedIn probably, let me see if this works. Yeah, here, Strats Arb Equity, Future Researcher, uh, Python Developer Data Engineer, Quant Portfolio Manager, Stat Arb Quant Researcher, Stat Arb Quant Researcher, Quantitative Researcher, uh, Systematic Portfolio Manager. So you'll get a lot with, with these titles. And if you're more in the high frequency space, obviously you can do high uh, frequency trader or high frequency trading obviously this is going to focus more on the programming side and but a lot of these are also going to say just trader uh, so here you can see FX trader actually one for for some reason I think indeed in a sense gives me more more results for high frequency trader uh, but for high frequency trading actually what I like to do is write low um, low level or low late actually low latency because actually if you write low latency you get C++ low latency trading developer and this is a very heavy in programming C++ data structures algorithm fixed protocol we're actually uh, doing high frequency trading in the space and most people in the space will just have a bachelor's degree because like I said yeah 40% has bachelor's 50 has master's because you're not really doing research you're just doing doing software but you're just doing more in the high frequency space uh, as you can see algorithm developer obviously instead of low latency you can do algorithm uh, developer or algo developer that's another very popular one uh, low latency C++ developer, uh, C low latency market data engineer, where here this is also doing some type of, uh, here you can see the market data team seeking production support engineer to support the PI market data platform at Credit Suisse, position requires full understand, understanding of the components involved in, involved in receiving direct fees from exchanges and del delivering normalized trade data. Uh, so you're going to be doing a lot, a lot of coding, a lot of optimization, you know, how fast can you know we send things to network you have to be very very uh, knowledgeable in linux in in network programming because obviously things are getting sent through these systems and they're running most likely within a linux system here low latency developer and i don't know why they don't use high frequency trader i think low latency probably is a better name and i think so too because you are doing and that is your job you are doing low latency uh you're you're doing milliseconds uh, you know, making that code as fast as possible. See, C, C++, Python, Bash, at least four years finance experience. Um, and this can, and it's pretty simple. They just want your experience. They don't, I don't think when it comes to high frequency trading, they really care about your degree. They just care that you know what you're doing. Software engineer, trading infrastructure, and trading systems developer. These are, couple ones I think indeed has a lot more jobs but obviously I feel like LinkedIn LinkedIn does a better job of kind of telling you how many people applied so you can see here 16 applicants and who your competition is where indeed wouldn't per se uh, do that and you're let's say you're like okay I applied in a hedge fund and I've applied in all these places but I can't get into a hedge fund I can't get anywhere where can I start and I would say either start and see if you can get a job in performance engineering or as an SRE, which is a site reliability engineer. Because as a performance engineer, what are you going to be doing is um, 
getting these systems and making them reliable you know sometimes having you know some java code and optimizing it so obviously low latency and high frequency traders really look to that and sre the same thing with site reliability engineering you're making sure you know your network your, your if something crashes and the network crashes you're there to solve that problem you're making sure that it's always available and you're in a sense of making sure that everything works, everything's fast, and everything is quick and when needed by the user. So uh, some of these things are even, I'm right here, performance engineer. If you write uh, performance engineer here at, at Facebook, C is gonna have, you know, Tackle said the art hardware perf uh, performance issues, but here, as you can see, it says, Solve hardware software performance issue, reduce resource consumption and so short and request latency. So literally this job right here, let's say you ended up getting a performance job, this can later on help you improve with low latency, high frequency trading jobs because you're doing a lot of this a little similar things here. Here it says experience performance engineering, capacity engineering, you're using a lot of the same languages. I feel like even if you don't get in a, in a hedge fund or a quantitative space, doing SRE, performance engineering, is an amazing space to do here at Lyft, site reliability. As it, uh, deep knowledge of C++, computational thinking, build holistic SLIs, SLOs, um, let me see if we have... They probably don't have latency as a keyword here, but as a SRE, you're, you're going to be doing a lot of, uh, you know, working with infrastructure with, you know, different cloud platforms. You're going to be doing a lot of similar things. Obviously, it's not the same job, but I feel like if you can't get into the high frequency trading job or maybe more in a quantitative analyst job, but you are still interested, I think performance engineering or SRE is a good place. Obviously, software is great because uh, you, obviously you learn how to build software, uh, but I feel like if you're more interested in the high frequency, low latency, being a performance engineer will be great for you. And one thing else that I like to do on LinkedIn is actually go to people's profiles. So let's say I'm interested, you know, Citadel Securities, for example. So here, uh, Citadel Securities, uh, this obviously is a hedge fund and what you can do and what I like the, about LinkedIn it gives you especially a premium it gives you insight you can see how many employees the growth within the company uh, how much is growing in finance engineering business development you can really look at the metrics how many people they've hired so literally in November they hired 21 pe uh, three people and in October they hired 21 people you can see who works at these jobs uh, the best thing that I like to do though is doing like Citadel Securities and let's say you want to be a quantitative finance, quantitative researcher for example. You're like what do these people do, what do these people have? So you can look at these people's profiles and be like you know he's a quantitative researcher at Citadel seven years but what did he do? He has a PhD in computer science from Carnegie Mellon. So you're going to see a lot of these quantitative researchers, like I said before, are going to have PhDs, probably some masters, uh, but you can look uh, here, master's computer science, master, master in structural engineering, scientific computing. So she just has a master's, but she's a quantitative researcher right now, Citadel Securities, doing high frequency trading for a year and a half. So you can look at all these people's um, profiles and just see what they did and get an idea so if, if let's say you're really interested in Hudson River trading you're like oh Hudson River trading is a high frequency trading firm I really want to work there uh, I want to be you know a quantitative analyst how do I what have what do the people who are quantitative analysts do there so you can look this is an algorithm developer quant has Hudson River trading Kind of click on the profile you can see she's been there for three years uh before before that she worked at kcg as a quantitative strategist uh, before that she worked at, as a professional gambler and after, before that she was an assistant trader and she actually she just has a bachelor's in mathematics uh, in mathematics from mit so you can see that you know she didn't even get a master's or a phd she just 
you know, got the foot in the door, was extremely smart, was proved herself that she was one of the best and got in. And obviously you can look around at what these people did and you can probably imitate uh, some of the things they've done so you can get in the door. Uh, so you can see here, obviously he's been at Citadel for a year and eight months. Before that he was at, Quant at Hudson River Trading as an intern for four months. And he has a master's degree from UC Berkeley in financial engineering. And you can literally look at all all types of companies, all types of people. You don't even have to look at the company. You can even do high frequency trader. Actually, if I do uh, low latency developer, that's a good one. Uh, I'll click here on people. And see this guy, let's click on his profile. He's a low latency developer at JP Morgan Chase. So he was a late, low latency developer at JP Morgan Chase. He was a software engineer at New York Stock Exchange. Before that, you know, you can see his experience and uh, he just has a BE. Uh, I don't really, really know what that is. And that's CFA and that's it. And obviously you can look around at all what all these people do, all, he, this guy, Sean, does low latency at two, uh, Tower Research Capital, also another high frequency trading firm. Before that, he was at KCG, uh, has a couple years of experience, just did a bachelor's, but at Columbia. And obviously there is a pattern. You can see that a lot of these people do have degrees from Ivy Leagues. So I would say, try to get a degree from either an Ivy League or a top 25, at least a top 50 school. And I think that will help you a lot. And, but if you don't, then is getting the most experience as possible and proving that you are the best. If you are not able to get into the top 50, 25 school, obviously I recommend at least top 25. Try your best, get as much experience as possible and prove that you're the best. And I think a lot of people will be like, you know what, it, didn't ma it doesn't matter if you didn't go to an Ivy League because you have the experience, you're proving yourself that you're the best. And that's, I feel like that's enough. This guy, as you can see, has a lot of experience, went to USC, BA in economics. Uh, well, he's actually a recruiter. See, hiring people, I thought he was doing low latency. <laughs> um, but you guys can see, uh, let's click on this guy. Low latency at 0.72, uh, has done a couple quant low latency level work, masters of science, city of New York. Uh, so. As long as I feel like you have a lot of experience, you can prove yourself. It doesn't have to be now. You don't. I mean, I only have five years of experience, and I've been trying to get in this space, and it's very difficult because most of my experience is in full stack development. So making that switch is kind of difficult. But you know, I feel like maybe if I can make it, I can show you guys how I did that transition. Uh, but obviously, I feel like LinkedIn is a very powerful platform if you want to you know find in general find any job but this is how I usually do my research on how to go about doing that research and finding a job in like, quantitative finance and also you know if you want you can do you know data science uh, data science here actually I want to do this last thing Because a lot of the jobs in data science, especially in New York and Chicago, are also going to be quant jobs. So uh, you can actually like look around and see if there's any, what type of jobs they are. Because obviously if you write data science, this can include you know, uh, uh, strategies, quantitative researcher, and there's like a mix right now. I feel like the job title for quantitative researchers still not, it, it is quantitative researcher, but some companies are changing it to more of a data science and a lot of the data, like the data science and quantitative researchers in some companies are doing the exact same thing. I guess that's the best way to, to say it. So some people might put that as uh, data science. You can just look around wherever you want and put it data science if you want to look at people that have that degree. Uh, at, let's say Goldman Sachs, for example. So here, let me do you 
can see, you know, his experience, what he's done. He's done a lot of data science and got his master's in science and business analytics from NYU. And you can see where some of these people have gone. If, you know, that's the path you want to take. If you want to take the more, more an investment bank path, uh, doing, you know, data science uh, strategies, uh, statistical arbitrage there, take that path. If you want to do hedge funds, uh, quantitative research or high frequency trading, uh, then take that path. And there's a lot, a lot of information online. But thank you.